Hi, beautiful Leo. Welcome to a new era. My name is Emma. Leo, this is your monthly reading. Um, this is for uh, May of 2022. We're going to start with three initial cards here. And then just go deeper and deeper into these energies and see what's going on for you. And if you feel like you resonate with this reading, there's going to be an extension at the end of this reading. I would highly recommend, recommend you to subscribe to this channel. I would recommend you to do that. <laughs> I would appreciate if you did that. And giving it a thumbs up at the end of this if you actually like the content. It really is important to me to understand what videos you like and what videos you don't. First cut out. For a winter, uh, set aside your concerns for now. You can make a decision later. Solutions that come from meditation, the need for more sleep or a vacation. For a winter, a little bit of hermit mode feel there, there as well. So let's see what that is about, going deeper into it. Second card out. Leo for the month of May. And we have a bunch of eclipses coming up and I really am feeling this one. This, uh, so when I'm recording this, it might be like a day right before the eclipse, first eclipse taking place now. So you might feel extra tired, you might feel extra emotional, you might feel extra um, disoriented or like not really being able to make a decision. And so maybe it's a good time to, to not, to sort of come into May a little bit. Second card out for Leo, please. The High Priestess. Very connected to the moon. The High Priestess number two, looking for balance. Trusting your intuition. Careful reflection before taking action. Insights that come from, through meditation. Second time you're inspired to go into meditation and the third card and I just want to say because uh, uh, you're the fifth sign that I'm doing and so for the other four I was using this uh, mystical wisdom deck I adore adore these uh, images in this one um, but as I started to do, to do your reading here today Leo I, I just couldn't I couldn't go forward with that deck and this deck the fairy this fairy deck um, I didn't even have it up and it was it really really just sort of called to me here today so for some reason this deck really wanted to be a, a part of your uh, reading I see the fairies as the little magicians of the universe making things happen for you so let's see what that is about that you didn't want to have the other deck but you wanted this one third card out for Leo for the month of May And the moon, wow. So we have the high priestess that I said was really connected to the moon. And then we actually have the moon card itself coming out. Um, it says powerful intuitive, powerful, sorry, powerful intuitive epiphanies, letting go of worry or and fear, understanding the truth of a situation. So it's all of um, set aside your concerns for now. You can bring it on later. Uh, Take a moment before you make any take any action. Um, letting go, of worry, and fear. Understanding the truth of a situation. Uh, powerful intuitive epiphanies. So they're like whatever, and we have all three for the color scheme. There's a lot about the truth and nothing but the truth. There's a lot about uh, the overall feel before we get it in, deeper into these cards. The overall feel here. Is like something is brewing, something is underneath, maybe something that you're not completely clear on, even have a little bit of anxiety or worry around, and that it like we just need to sit on it a little bit or get more information, more clarity, more meditation on it uh, before we sort of take any action on something, make any this decision about something. Um, we're gonna go deeper here and find out exactly what this is about. So we're starting with this for winter, which to me feels like a, a hermit situation as well, like a, a little bit of a hermit mode. I see a pine cone there, 
a pine cone. So that, that sort of really speaks to me with the pineal gland in the middle of your brain, which is like, it's your third eye. It's your, it's your psychic center. It's a real beautiful connection um, to the universe. I do apologize if... <laughs> I do apologize if the if the microphone is picking up the sound from my dishwasher. Okay, for a winter, four is a, is your heart chakra. Four is laying a new foundation for yourself. Solutions come from meditation. Need for more sleep or a vacation. So why is this here for Leo, please? For the month of May. Why is this here for Leo? Triumph and success. And I feel another one. I actually feel it from another deck, but let's see if there's an, another one wanting to come out here first. No. Let's do the other deck. Why is this here for Leo? There you go. Another number four and the Emperor. Stabil stability and efficiency, taking charge of a situation, ambitious plans. So this is very much, and I love the, the four clarifying the four, but this is also sort of turning into a 14, which is a new beginning for the heart. Um, I mean, this shows you're definitely coming out of this. This is like you're taking your time. There's something about like taking, uh, taking a break, taking a pause, um, making room for making room for things to show themselves. Does that does that make sense? You're not going out necessarily looking for things. The hermit mode or sort of going a little bit within is more like creating the space in your life, allowing for the space to to be made for the universe to actually be able to show you some results, show you something that you are looking for um, rather than be out there and constantly chasing what you're about or what you want. This is triumphant, not just success. It's always funny to me that it's triumphant success. It's not little success, it's huge. Um, together with the empress, emperor and the, and the triumphant success, this is just someone knows their path. You know your way, you have plans, you have structure, uh, you're going for it. And this is a breakthrough. We had powerful intuitive epiphanies. So there's some sort of aha moment or something coming to like a light bulb moment happening where there's a breakthrough. This is definitely being like the underdog coming from a hermit mode, coming from within and, and breaking free, breaking through. And whatever you're planning it's not half bad. It's not little. This is this is the breakthrough that you've been waiting for. This is the break breakthrough moment that you probably have been like because it's the emperor and because we have both the high priestess and the moon, which is very much like um, it's not working maybe on purpose in within like a secret or like in a hidden, but it's very much like it's not seen yet. Both the high priestess and the moon is about not being seen yet, or there could be something that's wait, like waiting to come to the surface to be known. Um, and so whether that is on purpose or not, this is, this is a time where we are coming out of the hermit mode. We're coming out of this uh, created space, allowed space to make anything known to you. So for instance, if I were to like very 3D, if I were to put it into a, 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 a real situation, I would say like, if you're looking for a relationship and just felt forever, like you couldn't find your person, you couldn't find this romantic partnership. If you're looking for a business partner to your, for your business, for your company, um, you're searching for that beautiful job, uh, whatever. And it's like, you've been going out for a while, for a while and you, you just don't, it just doesn't hit home is when you have created even either by default or by like um, sort of just allowing it to happen because it really didn't work. So you have sort of retrieved, is that what you say? You sort of have pulled back a little bit that made you come into this uh, hermit place. 
and you now allowed the space to to make this relationship be known to you instead of going on an app or going on like a someone setting you up or or like on purpose searching for this relationship you've been created this space for for it to come to you or for the job to be it's almost like someone's calling you asking you if you want to take this job position you're not going after it this is a breakthrough you have planned this and this two number four so it's like it's it's something that's really near and dear to your heart. It's important to you, and it's you've created it to, to put like to create a new foundation for yourself. And then with the high priestess, again, trusting your intuition, uh, careful reflection before taking action, insights that come through meditation. So I just want to say, together with these eclipses happening, I would just sort of, I would let. I think this is more like um, the careful reflection there is more due to I wouldn't sign any big contracts right now I never sign like I would never do that like on a full moon or anything like that and people sometimes say that that's just crazy this has nothing to do with you know and I continue to say well the the moon is moving the oceans so and we're 80 percent made up of those oceans so it's like I'm just gonna wait and because I'm feeling this eclipse this one I think it's I'm not into these, I shouldn't say I'm not into these eclipses. I just mean I'm not like educated around the eclipses. I'm not informed enough to talk really about these eclipses. Um, Google it, search it, go inwards and feel what those eclipses mean to you. I just know that there's a, an eclipse coming out like now. And I've really been feeling this one, like being really tired and really emotional and really that's why I say you might feel tired you might feel emotional um, you might feel a little bit dis disoriented and that's why I feel with the high priestess I would wait until these eclipses has just calmed down a little bit before um, before they have settled like they're not so active or not so um, in your face let's say but they have calmed down like petered out a little bit um, then I'd look at the same situation again. But the high priestess here together with together with you and whatever has come here before, there's something laying dormant or there's something uh, not necessarily hidden, but there's like a, a want or a wish that sits inside of you, Leo, that you're waiting for it to like manifest or to come out or and it, you're planning for it. And we're going to have a break, breakthrough here. And two is all about balance, find, finding that balance within. So why is the high priestess here for uh, Leo, please? You can so trust your intuition. Always, always, always trust your intuition on everything. And there's something, it might feel like it's outside of the, like it's just a little side note. Uh, but there's something about don't go for it just because it's presented to you. Does that make any sense? Don't go for it because don't because someone is showing their interest in you. You don't have to respond if it's not interesting to you. If uh, it feels like I said this last time too, or or the or the time before, like the week before, or something like that. There's something here about. Just because someone's showing their interest in you doesn't mean that you have to say because say yes because they're showing their interest. Because someone is uh, making you a job offer doesn't mean that you have to say yes to the job if you don't like it. Just because it offered to you. When you're starting to become a magnet and you're starting to become really, really like high in your vibration and, and coming into like more of a coherence in, in with the number two, I'm talking about balance here. And being the high priestess and the emperor is very... It's very powerful energy and <coughs> excuse me that will bring people in it will bring situations in and because you bring them in doesn't mean necessarily that you have to say yes there's a story that's lingering in my head and it has from the beginning so I'm gonna say it um and I was like what, what does that have to do with anything but now it's starting to make sense I think it was Chris Rock and I'm not trying to bring this other story to light but um and if you don't know, then you don't have to know. Um, but I think it was Chris Rock, was it not, that played... 
he didn't play God because I think that Alanis Morissette was playing God, which is just so beautiful all in all in all in itself. I think he played like a fallen angel or like or just a, an angel or something in this movie where Alanis Morissette was playing God and what was it? I, I can't remember now what movie it was. Was it with uh, Matt Damon? I don't know why Matt Damon comes to mind, but okay, there's something with this movie and the thing was that Chris, I think it, <laughs> my butcher everything from beginning to end here. I think it was Chris Rock and I think he was um, offered, um, he was offered this role to play, to just, you know, continue to allow the story of black people uh, where he was offered this, to play this role, uh, to play this black person sitting in the, sitting in the back of a bus because he was sort of pointed to the back of the bus because not, uh, no uh, black people were, were allowed to sit in, in like in front uh, of the bus, not in front, but in, you know what I mean. Um, and I mean, the, it was good, like he was offered this role in this movie, but he was like, no, For, first and foremost, I'm not going to perpetuate, is that what it's called? Like, I'm not going to prolong the, I'm not going to keep, you know, reinforce the old story about how black people sit in the back. Like that was such a casting, like he just didn't like it and he was sort of really sure of himself to say to be to be cocky enough to say no um only to like two days later like there was some ridiculous short amount of time that he like a couple of days later were, were off offered to play this role as an angel with Alanis Morissette playing God um I don't think it was him that was like supposed to play God and Alanis Morissette was an angel I think he was the angel but it, like it was so vastly different from what he was offered um, sitting in the back of a bus to then play the angel with like big, big names uh, in this next movie. And there's something to that there. You don't have to say yes just because it's offered to you. It's, you can sort of just see it as a smorgasbord or smorgasbord as I would say in Swedish. Um, like you could just see it as a buffet and just because it's there doesn't mean that you have to take it isn't that the best part of a smorgasbord or like a buffet like a like a christmas buffet of just the the yummy stuff at christmas um or the easter we just had an easter buffet like i just love buffets because of the options it doesn't mean that i pick every single one of them and it doesn't mean that i resent or say yes just because it's there right it's a buffet it's a buffet of options and so it's up to me to choose and just because like in a buffet, I guess it's easier because everything is at this display at once. Um, but at these, these things coming into you now, it's like options. And the reason I do this is because like it's options because you don't have to say yes to them. You can say no to them. You can say yes too. I, the, the whole point is that you say yes or no, depending on what your in intuition is telling you. Okay. Why is the High Priestess here? I mean, we both have like triumph and success and we have triumph. This is like, uh, this is the chariot. This is success. So it's talking about success again. Uh, it's number seven with number one. So it's like you're, you're coming out of something. Something com comes to light. You're coming from the High Priestess not hiding away, but something that has been lingering inside of you, becoming like a stronger, it's like, it's like you've been at home and just working yourself up. Does that make sense? Becoming a stronger and stronger magnet, stronger and stronger force. And it's like going to burst, like it's a breakthrough. We see that there, like a breakthrough um, into, again, a triumphant success. With the moon card, moon can also be about something that is like hidden. We don't see it just yet. It can be a little bit of a secret. It doesn't feel like this is a secret. It just feels like something that's been laying dormant inside of you and you're waiting for it to come out. Like we're waiting for the right opportunity, the right timing. 
And I love all those um, necroser. Uh, necroser. Oh, I had, the, I had this the other day. Why didn't I look it up? I don't know what necros is called in, in English. It's the flower that I that I would like. Um, <laughs> it doesn't do that. An elk. Uh, it's a, the lotus flower. Is that the lotus flower? Necros. I, I, I sort of, it's, it's a lot of the times it's being portrayed like that is the connection to source. That's connection. That's your crown. Your crown chakra is often portrayed as a lotus flower. I hope I'm not saying that wrong, the flower there. Um, they're just everywhere around her. And so you just feel with this, um, the both the high priestess and the moon card, like a lot about your intuition and getting into meditation, like there's a lot of connection there to your inner being, to source, to spirit. And there's something there, powerful intuitive epiphanies, letting go of worry and fear, understanding the truth of a situation, coming to the heart of something and just have, have this inner wish or inner brewing come to clarity, have a breakthrough. Now I know what it is or now I see clearly like, okay, why is the moon here for Leah, please? Why is the moon here? So we have this stand your ground. Uh, it flipped but didn't come out. Talks so much about eclipse. Seven again. So there's a, there's, there's a result that is just waiting to be uncovered. There's a result that is just waiting to be uncovered right now. Breakthrough, epiphany, coming to the surface, coming from within the priestess and out into the light, coming from within the moon and like it's being revealed with this eclipse. I think it's like, a, it's this, isn't it a sun, sun, it's not called sun eclipse, solar eclipse right around now i think when i'm recording this um like towards the end of april and then there is a lunar eclipse like so the first eclipse is like a solar eclipse or like half a solar eclipse or something and the second one is a lunar one which means that we're we're coming to some sort of epiphany around the solar eclipse something's like calming down a little bit and falling into place and then the big reveal or a big breakthrough or whatever is around the lunar because i feel like so much moon here it's so much i mean we obviously we have the moon card but it is overall i even felt the moon it, with the high priestess or yeah there's so much with the moon why is the moon here There's the dishwasher. <laughs> there you go. I mean, passion ignited. Number one again. We have the emperor with the triumph and success number one, and then triumph with which is the it's the chariot card. It's it's, it's it's promised success with passion ignited number one again. It's like. We've been holding back. We've been in hermit mode, like on all fronts. And then it's like, it's just a, it's a breakthrough moment. It's an epiphany that leads to like coming out of your shell, coming back into the game, um, having a big manifestation take place that just reinforces so much for you. I'm going to take this into the extension and see what else I can find there for you going deeper into this message. Uh, so if you feel like this is your reading or you feel like you're drawn to it, you're so welcome there. Uh, both links, read about them, are in the description box down below. If not, thank you so much for watching, Leo. I really highly appreciate you coming here watching these videos. Please consider to uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And give it a little thumbs up if you like what you're hearing. It really helps me to understand 
um, you as my audience, like what do you like to hear and what, what do you not like to hear, okay? Thank you so much, guys. See some of you guys in the extension. Bye.